when I got this table, this isn't what it looked like. This is what it looked like. The entire table was painted in a thick coat of gray. Now, I like gray a lot. Unfortunately, it was showing its age and the support brace between the legs was missing. But there was something sweet about this table to me. I did a little research and I found out that this is a bobbin leg table from the 40s. So to see the transformation, continue watching this video. The first thing that we did was to disassemble the table so to make it easier to refinish. This was tedious and a bit of a challenge because it seems that over the years, someone has tried to fix the table's sturdiness by adding more and more nails and screws. I must have removed a minimum of 30 screws and nails and the person who originally hammered in the nails didn't put a single one in straight. Now the legs are still attached to the base support, but that's gonna require a little bit of a delicate touch, some precision, so best to leave that to Ralph. But what I get to do is strip the top. So I have some citrus strip here and I'm going to pour it all over the top, cover it in plastic, leave it for 30 minutes, check on it. Hopefully it's ready to be scraped because I just really want to see what it looks like. But I don't know what kind of paint this is. I don't know how old it is. I know nothing about this table. So uh, it's going to be a bit of an adventure, but I mean, it's paint scraping. It's so much fun. Who cares? Uh, so let's get started with that. It's been just over an hour and you can see the paint is starting to bubble and raise. So this is a good sign and I think the paint's ready to be scraped. I have a scraper, gloves, paper towels, and a garbage and I think that's all I'm going to need. Ooh, oh, oh, this is good. This is good. It's beautifully sunny today, just incredibly, incredibly humid. It's actually supposed to storm at some point today, but this is the day that I picked as the perfect day to scrub the tabletop with some mineral spirits. So I have a rag, some gloves, a mask, and I'm just gonna try to take off whatever's left before I sand. I'm still definitely going to need to sand this. I removed what I could with the chemical processes and then it was time for elbow grease. I started with 80 grit sandpaper and moved along to 220. This is what it looked like after I was done with the 80 grit. I hand sanded the edges in order to preserve those details. The tabletops looking pretty good. I've done quite a few runs with 220 grit sandpaper and it looks pretty good except for there's just a few dark stains that I just can't sand out. I know I'm staining this a dark color, but I just think those are just gonna look like bad blotches. So I did a little bit of research and I'm going to try to get the stains out. One of the methods that I read was soaking a rag in hydrogen peroxide and then leaving it overnight or at least six hours over the stains, like saturated over the stains and it's supposed to lift the stains. So I don't think I can ruin this anymore. So I'm going to give this a try. Hopefully it works because I don't feel like trying another. I don't, I don't know if I keep compounding like hydrogen peroxide, then with vinegar, then with some other, I saw toothpaste. I saw a bunch of different methods, but this one, I think, I don't even know if it makes scientific sense, but it's what I'm going to try. So I'm going to saturate the rag and just put it on top of the stains.
Good morning. It's time to check on the peroxide bleaching test. I don't really have the highest hopes for this, but I don't know, maybe it does work. I did come about six hours after my, I initially put this on and I added a little bit more peroxide to make sure the rag was damp and that's all I've done. I haven't checked it, so let's check it together. I know it's still wet, but I think it pretty much looks exactly the same. So that was a bust. I'll check on it again once it's dry to see maybe if it lightened up. I don't think so though. I think I'm just stuck with the stain. Bummer. I wasn't successful lightening the stain at all, but I can definitely fix up these cracks with some wood filler. I'm not miming here. I just messed up with my mic so there's no sound. What I'm explaining here is that I'm applying wood conditioner before staining because of the condition and age of this top. In the end, I'm not even convinced that I had to use the conditioner. The finish does end up pretty even, but I'm still not sold on the idea. I think the color might have turned out richer without using the conditioner. I apply the conditioner first against the grain, then I wipe off any excess wiping along the grain. I then leave it for 30 minutes before staining. It's been 30 minutes that the conditioner has been sitting here. In the meantime, I've baked a batch of muffins and now I'm ready to stain. This is a new stain color to me. It's called chocolate, which, I mean, that sounds good. So I'm hoping it's a dark chocolate, not a milk chocolate and not like a red chocolate, whatever that would be. So let's see how it looks. The color is too light. I wanted it richer. Like the color that I first put on is exactly what I want, but when I wipe it off, it gets this lighter, almost a little too golden color. Uh, I'm not giving up, no way. I've done way too much work on this. So I'm going to, it says it's ready for top coat in an hour. So I'm gonna let it sit for an hour and then I'm gonna give it another coat of the stain and then just let it sit there maybe a bit longer than recommended. They recommended one to three minutes. So I might go five and see how that goes. And um, it's just, I just wanted like a richer chocolate, like, like a chocolate bar, you know? But in the meantime, I've got some muffins to go eat and we know how I like my treats. So muffin time. The top did take three coats, but it's finally dark enough, like a rich enough color. So I'm ready to seal it. I'm going to be using my stinky wax, which is okay because I'm in the garage. So stinky is fine right now. I'm just gonna do this. So all you do is just rub it on with a brush and then buff it out within 10 minutes. And then to kind of give a little richer color, I'm going to go over it with an antique wax too. Wax on, wax off. I've never even seen that movie, but I hear people saying that. So that's what I'm gonna do, wax on, wax off. These are the supports that the legs fit in and they're underneath the table. So no one's gonna see them. I don't plan on staining them, but I do plan on painting them. But I don't wanna bother going through the whole process of stripping. So I'm just gonna give them a quick sand with some 80 grit and see how that goes. I think as long as I get the shine off, I'll be able to paint them all right. Now that the legs are removed, I can start taking the paint off. I'm not going to be staining these. I'm going to actually be painting over them, but this paint is on so, so thick. So I do want to strip it as best I can. And I'll be using citrus strip. I have saran wrap, a brush and gloves. That's all I need. I'm just going to coat these, wrap them 
like little packages in the saran and just let them sit until I can see the paint all starting to bubble. And then I'm gonna scrape it off. With all these, with all this detailing, I'm sure the scraping part is gonna take a long time. But it's a nice Friday afternoon, so let's get to work. Here are the legs out of the sun, just relaxing, living their best life while the stripper works on the paint. And it's already starting to work. It's only been a few minutes. And you can, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's already starting to kind of bubble up. So this should be much easier than I was hoping. No, it's not, it's gonna still be really difficult, but at least it'll be quicker than waiting all day. It's finally time to strip the paint off these legs. I have a couple tools that I'm gonna be using, so two different spatulas, or scrapers, I should say, and one of these heavy-duty scouring pads. They're meant for paint. It's not like a thing from the kitchen. It's actually meant for paint. Well, there's a bee there. So, let's see. This is the first pass on the first leg. There's still paint left on it, so I think I'm gonna have to give it one more application of the citrus strip, but not too bad. It's just mostly in like little grooves. So, okay, there, that looks really bad, but. Hmm. Three more legs to go, and then do it all over again. The legs look good. Almost good enough to stain, but they're gonna get painted. The last step before painting is going to be to clean them a bit more with some mineral spirits. This is just gonna get the last bit of sheen off and whatever other residue. It's a boring job, but it needs to get done. I painted the legs with a fusion paint in the color Ash. It's a really dark gray with blue undertones. Fusion paints are great to work with. The paint is watery, similar to a stain, and it's really pigmented, also like a stain. You use so little, but it covers a lot, and it's water-based, so cleanup is super easy. Because it's watery, it's soaking up into the wood and leaving no brush strokes. To create a cross brace for the legs, I started with two 48-inch dowels each having a diameter of 5 eighths of an inch. I wanted it to appear as seamless as possible where the dowels would meet in the middle, so I cut one dowel in the center using a 5 8 inch drill bit to match the diameter size of the dowel. Once done, I sanded the rough edges and tested out the fit. Anna was impressed, and the result had her stamp of approval as a cross brace for the legs. The table had some form of brace in its past, but at some point in its lifetime, it broke. The remnants can be seen here. I needed to remove these broken portions to use my dowels for bracing. I used a drill with a 5 8 inch drill bit to rebore a hole. This first bit I found to be a little dull, so I had to run out and buy a new one. The next day, with my new drill bit, I placed a depth gauge marker using some painter's tape and drilled all four legs to the same depth. Next was to replace the table leg support. Although I can clearly see on video where they previously were, it wasn't so easy when I was doing it. So I used some tape to help ID the outline. These brackets were then screwed down before replacing the table legs. Each leg fit very snugly into position, 
so I used a rubber mallet to help in pounding the legs back in. With the legs back into the brackets, I was able to measure the distance between the legs and cut the dowels to the correct length. Before Ralph glues and attaches these, I don't know, leg supports, base supports in, I wanted to stain them just so it's just easier on me. I'm using the same stain I stained everything, the top, not everything, just the top, in chocolate. So, oh, and I'm not gonna use conditioner this time because it seemed to not let the wood absorb so much, so we're just gonna put it on and wipe it off. With the dowels for the cross brace stain, I glued in the first piece. I then marked off the center to help in placing the next two dowels for the cross brace. With everything together, I turned the table around just to make sure that it was stable and that it didn't rock. I definitely didn't want the glue to dry, only to find out later that the table had some issues with it. The build, or should I say, the rebuild of this table is all done. So now I just have to do my finishing touches. I need to wax this X brace down here and then give the last coat to these legs. And then once everything is dry, I'm going to add one more coat of wax and it's gonna be the dark wax over anything that's been stained brown. And then it'll be done. Originally, my plan was to paint the whole table white. And I thought, mm, maybe keep the white legs, but do a wood top. Then I dropped the whole idea of white completely and went with the dark gray legs and kept the wood top idea. I did this because I thought the dark gray legs was kind of just a little more unique and a little less farmhousey. What do you think about my choices? Now, the part that I'm most impressed with is the support that Ralph built for the legs. It's simple, but blends right in with the original design. If you agree with me, give this video a like to let them know. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you soon with another project. Bye. Ah, my face hurts from smiling. Hope one of those is good. Cause I want coffee now. And I have to do an outro. Yep, and we go blurry again. Like, oh, I finally figured out. It's because right in the middle is my focus spot, but it's not tracking me. Man, I have so much alone with this camera. Oh well, I still have half a cup of coffee to finish. See you later.